Jacobs is also a member of the Mighty Hawk Band. Can everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can you please remain standing for the pledge to the Texas flag? I pledge allegiance to the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Please take a seat. Awesome. Would you will come up for a picture? Next, we'll move into our recognitions. Turn it over to Ms. Samper. Yes, at this time, we are going to do Campus Teachers of the Year and Child Care Teacher of the Year. Deputy Superintendent Michelle O'Lara and Katrina Reeves will be assisting. Good evening. Tonight is a very exciting night as we get to honor staff that are exemplary teachers on their campuses. Um, every year, each campus in Little Hawks accepts nominations um, for their Campus Teacher of the Year. These nominations reflect how each of the teachers exemplify the educator profile of the four talents of the Hawk, prepared, grit, character, and service. Once selected as the Campus Teachers of the Year, they completed information about themselves, which is then provided to a campus district committee. The district committee then selects the elementary and secondary teachers of the year, and those will be announced during our celebration tour in May. These two teachers will go on and be recognized by our region center. The Texas Teacher of the Year program has honored excellence in classroom education and showcases many outstanding educators whose efforts and example have inspired students, colleagues, and communities they serve. We're excited to be able to have each of these teachers here tonight to celebrate such an honor. As I call your name, please join us at the front and remain standing as I call everyone up for their award. So we're going to start with our little hawk. And we have Karen Paracelli. She's a child care teacher. She has seven years experience, all with ROISD. She states, I have high expectations of my students, 1% better each day. I also understand that each child learns differently and for that, I do give them grace and room to grow. Our Eastridge Elementary teacher could not be here tonight, but we will still want to honor. It's Belinda White. Um, she has 18 years of experience with six of those in Red Oak. Okay, our next one, R-O-E. Okay, she was not able to make it tonight. 
So Red Oak Elementary's Teacher of the Year is Nicole McGill. She's one of our special education teachers. She has 17 years experience with four of those in Red Oak. Okay. Our next one is Shutman Elementary's Teacher of the Year. Lakindra Stovall. She is she has 27 total years with three of those in Red Oak. She said, I connect with my students by meeting each student where he or she is academically, socially, and emotionally. Students are encouraged to have a growth mindset to ensure their challenges are a stepping stone and not an obstacle. Congratulations. Okay, our next one we have Shields Elementary, Sarah Stewart. Sarah Stewart is our fifth grade math and science. She has seven years experience with seven of those in Red Oak. She said, I remind my students of the importance of working hard to do your best, not anyone else's best, and that every day is a new chance to make your world a better place. We all make mistakes, but it is how we recover from the mistakes that define our character. So, congratulations. Next, we have Wooden Elementary's Teacher of the Year, Sally Overa. She teaches a fourth grade bilingual. She's been teaching for 14 years with two of those in Red Oak. Um, she states, I'm a lifelong learner who is constantly seeking opportunities to become a better facilitator of student learning. I create lessons that motivate my students and ignite the curiosity that will eventually sustain them as they become brilliant human beings. Okay. Our next one is Red Oak Middle School, Cynthia DeFries. Cynthia has been teaching for 26 years with two of those in Red Oak. She says, ultimately, life is about growing. If I can be a caring teacher who provides my students a safe place to grow and learn, then I have been successful. The evidence is in my students, both past and present. Congratulations. We have Red Oak High School Teacher of the Year, Cynthia Stout. She is one of our math teachers with a total of 29 years experience with 14 of those in Red Oak. She said, I expect my students to improve a little bit every day and not use any excuses as to why they cannot succeed. I enjoy seeing my students accomplish things, not only in the classroom, but also outside the classroom. Congratulations. No, sir. Okay. <laughs> 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 
Thank you all. We got plenty of time. <laughs> I mean, she is. Oh my gosh, oh, she is so cute. She's cute. She's cute. She's cute. She's Oh, 
Johnson. <laughs> uh, I know that these teachers are highly motivated and highly successful. You'd love to stay here and listen to all of the rest of our meeting, but this may be a good opportunity for you to step out with your, with your family. <laughs> Otherwise, you might regret it. Go home and rest. Get ready for that big day. That's right. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the family for coming to support. Good. It's great. <clears throat> All right, next we're going to move into our superintendent's report. Okay. We are going to start with our Mentors Care update, and Brian Blackwell, Managing Director of Mentors Care, is here with a presentation. Well, good evening, board. Good evening, Ms. Sanford. It's a privilege to be here again with you this year uh, to present the stats for Mentors Care. And what I'm going over with you this evening are preliminary stats that cover August 2023 through uh, January 2024. So about four or five months of data. And then we will provide the district a detailed report that will be in June or July, and that will cover the entire school year. So uh, thank you, guys, uh, for having me tonight. And uh, I'll answer any questions you guys have at the end of the presentation. Uh, just a refresher as to who we are, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. We started it at Midlothian High School uh, with Dina Petty, our executive director, starting the program in 2009. Uh, we started with 25 kids and 25 mentors that first year with one school, and now we're at 17 schools. This year we will mentor almost 800 students uh, with about 750 mentors uh, in 17 high schools across five counties in Texas. So it's exciting to see the growth. Uh, what we do is we connect struggling students uh, with a caring adult mentor from your community. And I have to brag on this community. Uh, the support we've received here has been unbelievable. Uh, just the way the adults are faithful to show up every week uh, and the relationships they form. It's obvious every, every function I go to at Red Oak High School, just the care that uh, your community has for its students. These are program-wide stats. I'll get to Red Oak High School stats in a minute, but this is program-wide. The way that we identify students for our program is we depend on principals, teachers, coaches, those who know the kids to refer students to us. And uh, when we interview a student, we're checking boxes to see what that student's needs are. And I'll show you three categories of needs in a minute. But it's kind of like triage. Imagine that there was some type of accident and the most injured would be treated first. That's that's what we want. We want your most hurting, your kids who are really struggling with school and or life. And so uh, these are some of the descriptors we use, some of the issues our kids deal with, just some of the life conditions they deal with. And this is across 17 high schools. But you can see that of the students who say that they struggle socially after two years in the program, almost 60% say that that's not an issue for them anymore. The same with behavioral issues, 45% of those students who came into the program with behavioral issues now report that that's not an issue. You can read those yourself. And the, the stats are just uh, are pretty astounding every year when I look at them. <clears throat> what do I need to point out here? <laughs> that way, okay. There we there go. All right. <laughs> Uh, uh, we've grown a lot in the last, uh, well, just in the three years I've been here. We, when I started in 2021, there were nine schools, and there will be uh, there will be at least 19 in the fall. We've added two new ones, um, Itasca, and then a charter school, High Point Academy, and, and White Settlement. But um, the most recent schools we've added, we added Hillsboro last fall. That program has really grown. And we added Grandview and Keene down in Johnson County back in January. To take a look at the indicators, when I talked about interviewing students and, and what their needs are, there are three categories. Uh, they're what we call the state of Texas. TEAs identified the factors on your left. 
Uh, each one of these are strong indicators that students might struggle. Uh, and really what research shows that the more indicators are checked, the greater the likelihood that student uh, is to not finish high school. The most common ones we see in our state at risk indicators, we see lots of kids failing two or more classes uh, for the semester. We see lots of kids who weren't promoted to the next grade level. We see lots of kids uh, who have been in DAEP, and that's one of our, our, tar our, target, our target populations are your DAEP kids, so we offer that to everyone of your DAEP kids. And we see lots of kids um, who uh, did not pass STAR. Under the top on the right, you see our mentors care changeable indicators. These are kind of fluid. Uh, you may uh, you know, have attendance issues for a while, we get that fixed, and that's no longer an issue. At the bottom, you see our unchangeable indicators. This is some type of trauma, some type of condition that affects students for a long time, like the death of a parent. That impacts students, many people, for the rest of their life. And so these are, the, these are the things we're looking for as we interview students. Now to get to Red Oak High School stats specific, um, these are students who were in the program at any time this year. 57% reported that they had semester grades below 70. 31% uh, had been in DAEP, 28% in CPS, 12% uh, not passing STAR. So these are the state at-risk indicators this year. Our at-risk indicators, you always see much higher numbers. 55% um, came in with grades below passing. Uh, depression and anxiety are an epidemic at this point for our young people. Uh, I'm a recovering middle school principal, and I remember saying retired middle school principal. But I remember saying to our counselors, even, even five years ago, that we're, we're basically having a mental health crisis at, at our school. We would see one student a year talking about, you know, harming themselves. And then it got to where we were seeing kids almost week, every week, multiple kids a week toward the end. And so uh, anxiety and depression are things that a lot of, a lot of kids are struggling with. Um, kids that just aren't motivated. Uh, a lot of kids have a hard time making that connection that if I do my work, I'll pass my class and I'll graduate. <laughs> and that leads to a, a good chance at a, at a productive life. And so you see much higher indicators uh, when you look at our at-risk indicators. Those were the changeable. Here are the unchangeable. A third of the kids in mentors care at Red Oak High School come from top, some type of um, either a blended family or a broken home or a single parent home or parents who are divorced. 16% uh, of the students report they've either been in the criminal justice system or their parents have been in it. Uh, and then a, a, a percentage of our kids also say that their family has uh, financial struggles. One of the amazing things I love about our program, it's really kind of fourfold. Number one, there's that mentor showing up every week to be a friend and a role model to the student. Number two, you've got our awesome coordinator, Ms. Keener, who's here tonight. She'll come up in a minute. Uh, she's an extra layer of support. And then the third part is the referrals that we do. I'll, I'll show you those now. Then the fourth part is we've been able to help many of our graduates find employment once they graduate. We have relationships with employers all across the area. So once we find out a student wants to become a plumber, boom, we call k &P Plumbing in Mansfield. Hey, do you have an opening for an apprentice plumber? Yes, we do. Send them to us. So that's been really good. Uh, but on the area of referrals, Katrina does a lot to help students outside of school. And so she's had 24 students refer to community resources. We have relationships with food banks, clothing banks, uh, places who will offer counseling, places who will take in students who are homeless, kids who need medical care, whatever they need. We're here to meet their physical needs as well. So nine times this year, from just from August through January, these numbers will be much higher at the end of the year. Uh, already 24 times in, at the end of January, she had helped kids with clothing nine times. She'd help kids with medical six times, counseling six times. Twice you had students go homeless, and she was able to help them find temporary housing. And then one, there was one CPS report as well. 63% of your students at the end of January were on track to earn all their credits to be promoted. That's encouraging. Uh, almost 80% were on track to meet the 90% rule for attendance. We want them here more often than 90%, but 90% is that magic percentage the students have to be in that classroom in order to get credit. We don't want to see our kids losing credit because they're not at school. And then this is exciting. You guys uh, last year had 14 graduates, 14 seniors. Um, Mentors Care had 
100% of their graduates across 17 schools graduate the last three years. But you guys have even more seniors this year. You have 16 seniors, and every one of them is going to graduate. So uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's either you guys or Abilene Wiley that have the most seniors graduating that are in mentors care. Again, there it is. There's that 16 uh, seniors. Uh, at the end of January, you had 58 students in the program. A uh, caseload for us is 50 to 60 kids. And so you've got a full caseload of students. You have 60 mentors. That's 60 adults from your community coming into your high school every single week. So multiply 60 times 26. That's a lot of interactions between community and school, which is awesome. I have to brag on your volunteers because you guys had the most volunteer hours of any of our schools. Uh, 773 hours, and that average is the highest as well, at an average of 13 uh, hours volunteered by each adult coming in. And you're at almost 80% of scheduled meetings happening. Our goal is uh, 80%, and that's, that's a pretty ambitious goal. We were about 75 last year, so uh, we're going to get there. <clears throat> there are also times that students outcry to Ms. Keener. They, they come to her. Uh, with things that go well beyond food or clothing. Uh, she had uh, 39 outcries from August through January, and that's a lot. And 30 of those for anxiety, 8 for depression, and there was one for abuse or neglect. It's also important to mention that Ms. Keener also will help kids who aren't in the program. And there were 58 times that Red Oak High School students reached out to her for some type of help um, that aren't students that aren't in the program. I love this, uh, these quotes, but first, uh, just know that almost half of the kids in Mentors Care say that, and this is program-wide, this is not specific to Red Oak, it includes Red Oak, but almost half the kids in Mentors Care say that they did not have uh, that safe, caring adult to talk to before uh, they came into Mentors Care. Uh, the power of student voice is powerful. I love what kids say. Uh, the, the first quote just says, the student says that they love having caring adults by their side. Mentors Care has helped them open up. And then I love, love, love what your second student said. It says, uh, that student said, I love and look forward to every moment I have with my mentor. She makes me feel heard and cared for. Well, this is new this year. We started tracking what your last year's graduates are doing now. So that's a service we're happy to give. Uh, you had 14 graduates last year. Of those 2023 20, graduates, eight entered the workforce and six entered college. And this is exciting. We had seven total first year, um, first generation high school graduates across 17 schools last year, and one of them came from Red Oak. So you had one first generation high school graduate, uh, and we, we celebrate that with those kiddos, and we believe that they, if they have a sibling who also graduates, we've done our part to help break that cycle and encourage students to finish high school. The great Miss Keener uh, is, you can see her quote, I am uh, going to have her come up at this time. She has one of her awesome kids with her, and that student's going to just talk briefly about the program. I just want to say thank you guys for having us here tonight. I, I know how much you love this program as much as I do, um, and I appreciate how much you guys fit into this program. Um, so I'm really excited to have Ross speak to you. Um, I know this is shocking to you, but this teenager getting in front of you is really nervous. So I told her I would stand here by her. I also gave her a duck, but she didn't bring it. She was afraid she would quite, like make it quack during it. But I want you guys to know, usually when I introduce a student, I kind of say their name and that's it. But I want you guys to know that this kid is super, super special to me because I have seen a growth that I have yet to see in any of my students. And I know you all know this, but I've been with public education for 21 years. So watching this kid from where she came from, she may tell you a little story, she may not, but from where she came from to where she is now, to being able to graduate maybe before December, which is when her on track is, she has done amazing things. You're welcome to get all that emotional and mushy stuff in front of But anyways, this is Roz, and so I'm going to let her speak to you for just a second. No. <laughs> Um, well, my name is Rosalyn Martinez. I am a student at the Red Oak High School, and I'm also in the Mentors, of course. And um, basically, the Mentors Care has been really helpful to me. Like, my mentors is really supportive. Like, I've grown a lot since, like, I've been in the Mentors program. Um, I started when I was a freshman, right? 
And I got into this car accident, and the car accident, like, really messed me up. Like, I got really, like, sad because I really couldn't do anything. And, well, I'm actually a dropout. I dropped out, like, twice. And I actually, like, was thinking over the summer I need to get my stuff together. And so I came back um, this year. And, well, Miss Keener has been really supportive and also my mentor. Um, and, um, yeah, I plan on graduating in December, but, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I want to also know, this is my favorite part, okay, guys? See, all brag on you being a brag okay? When she first came to me, I never saw her <laughs> because she was never at school. And she has been in school almost every single day this year, really proving that this is what she wants for herself. And I think that that is just huge. So that speaks a lot to Mr. Scare, but for me, that speaks a lot to the push and integrity that she has about herself. So this is just a great example of a great kid who just needed the extra push to get done, and she's going to do it. And I will be the loudest person in the school when she does. So thank you for that. You guys have any questions for me? So, so I, have, I have one question. So, yes, sir. 60 is the kind of the setup of the program. We have 58 kids. Is is it 60 because I'm sure we we're turning kids away? We could probably have more more mentors and because more kids could be in the program. Do we just not? Well, when, what would allow us to have more kids? I guess. What I would say is it's not a hard cap, first of all. We have some schools that have upwards of 70 or more. So we're not going to turn students away. Right. But I think you kind of have to look at it in terms of like a caseload for that coordinator. They're dealing with a lot, right. and they're helping a lot of students. For example, um, when I was a principal, let's say that uh, I had a diagnostician who had a caseload of, of 300 students she was trying to take care of. You get beyond that, and it just it, it's, it, things begin to break down a little right. bit. You're not, you're not able to give your best to all your kids. It'd be like a, an algebra class with 45 kids in it. You just you want to take them all, but you want to be able to give them your best as well. So it's a, it's a fine line we walk. We're not going to turn students away, uh, but we also have to balance that with being able to give our kids our best. Well, I know this is a program that I haven't been able to do it in the last couple of years, just from a schedule standpoint, but I've done it in the past. You know, Although we're on the board and sure we do policy and make some decisions, but this is a program where you can personally impact a kid's life and education. We're not teachers, right? The, the mentors, most of them are teachers, or a lot of them are teachers. Uh, but you, you have to build a relationship. And I watch, you know, Karen does it. She's, she's a mentor. And, you know, when it's her time to, uh, to have a chat with that kid, it's scheduled time, and she meets, meets with her, whether it's on the phone or she's personally there. And, and, and I know the other ones do that, too. And that's, that's important for the kids, uh, but this is, these are programs that we really need to publicly, I guess, push more. I know we do a pretty good job of it, but um, I don't know. I'd like to see this this program grow and, and be able to take more and more kids. So. Well, thank you for your support, and, and we want to take more kids. We're, we're able to take more than 58. Yeah. We are. Uh, this is the community and the way the district has supported us. It's really easy. Um, and that's why it worked so well, because of the support we received from you guys. So we're always recruiting mentors, so we'd love to have you guys. We'll start our push in the summer for the for fall mentors. So please consider being a mentor. Yeah, so I sure. Okay. Last thing. I appreciate the work that you do. Yes. Yeah, she's awesome. Uh, I tried to hire her, and I was a principal, and she wouldn't leave right. <laughs> uh, but the beautiful thing, here's, here's what, what makes it really great, is some programs have one person on a campus to serve 100 kids, okay? And, and that, those students get little to no time with that, with that student. The beautiful thing about mentors care is every student has two adults in their corner. They have Ms. Keener, and they have their, their personal mentor. So it's really a two-to-one ratio of two adults taking care of one student. So. so I know it's only in the high school. Do you think that it'll mm -hmm. ever go to the middle school? We get asked that, that all the time. <laughs> we get asked that all the time. We, we've talked about it. I'm prepared. I'm a middle school guy, I mean, for 30 years. 
Uh, I'm prepared to write the curriculum. Our board has our board has to approve it, and so I think that's you're going to see that coming um, in the next couple of years. Okay. Yeah, we get asked all the time. Yeah, that was actually going to be one of my comments. <laughs> she beat me to it. She beat you. Uh, to it. But it's honestly, like I said, I've, I've had the opportunity to mentor, and it's um, I actually uh, young man started and watched him graduate. And then we had dinner or lunch the other day, you know, so e even when they finish high school, just keeping track with them, you know, just talking to them um, is an honor, you Absolutely. know, and, and watching these kids grow, it's, uh, it's profound. It almost always happens just organically that that mentor student relationship or that that relationship continues after the student graduates. It almost always happens. There's a friendship there. So. Anything else for me? How soon do you start looking at kids? Like, what's the look back? So, like, if they do it in high school, or you're already looking at the eighth graders? That yes, ma'am. One of the things Miss Keener will do is she'll go down to the middle school and to meet with the, the counselors to find out who would be students who would be good fit. We want to catch them in their freshman year. So, yes, ma'am, that does happen. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you so thank much. You. Okay, and next we have um, Assistant Superintendent of District Operations, Mr. Kevin Frills, is going to give us a construction update. Here in a minute, you're going to get to see we had a historic day out at the job site. Highlights since our last board meeting, uh, April 1st. The final plat was approved by the City of Obilla Planning and Zoning on April 8th. The final plat was approved by the Obilla City Council last week on April 9th. Construction permit was issued. And tonight, later on, Dr. Johnston is going to make a presentation over the final bid package for our construction project of Red Oak Middle School number two. That's what we started with. Get a good look at that. Because that's where we're at last Thursday. That's awesome. Uh, Hallelujah. It's hard to believe uh, where we're at, but we're, we're making progress today. We started right back there drilling the piers, and you'll see that here in a minute. Right back here in the gym, right there. That corner was the first pier drilled at Red Oak Middle School in that corner. That will be the storm shelter. So, since the last board meeting, we've had the opportunity to get all the uh, utilities put in, storm, storm, uh, sanitary sewer in the water, tension boxes, everything, all the underground utilities, there's a detention pond. That's a picture of the whole pad, pad site. They started tying steel last Wednesday, the day after we got the permit, we started tying steel. We tied steel all weekend. And this morning we started building the first pier in the corner. And we were successful in drilling and pouring 18 piers today. So we've made a, we're starting construction, folks. Um, um, as we've said since day one when we started this project, it was about a 19 month uh, project from the day that we obtained a construction permit to the time we got substantial completion. Remember, we thought this was going to happen in about October, November to put us on a July of 25 time schedule. Well, now we're backed up to April of 24, so we're looking at November to December of 25 currently with our 19 months um, schedule. Because it may look that we're ahead, but really not, because on a normal construction site, they'd be doing a lot of this simultaneously. And so we are behind, but uh, we've, we, we've made it. We've made the turn in the road, and we're, 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 we're going. So uh, now the weather holds out. Luckily, it didn't monsoon on that side of 35 last week like it did on this side. 
35 was the dividing line. It was so crazy, but uh, we survived out there. It wasn't as bad. It didn't rain out there. So, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just a couple more things. Just want to highlight. Uh, congratulations to Red Oak Middle School Concert Band for earning UIL sweepstakes. And also the Red Oak Special Olympics basketball athletes competed in the Special Olympics Area 10 basketball tournament. And they came in third place. So we're very proud of them. Uh, the Red Oak Middle School archery team had a successful state tournament. Several students set personal records and gained over 100 points on their overall best team score. Also, our Red Oak High School Winter Guard competed in the NTCA state championship for the first time, and they finished in the top 10, so that's a huge accomplishment. Uh, we will have a special called meeting. Um, normally, I'm giving a lot of different information to you, and I want to explain why I'm not tonight. We're going to have a special called meeting on May the 13th at 6 p.m. We're going to hold that in the high school pack to recognize our student accomplishments for spring that will include athletics and fine arts. So that's why I'm not going to give you a lot of the different things that I normally do on athletics and fine arts tonight. Uh, Red Oak ISD has been honored with the Best Communities for Music Education designation from the NAM Foundation for its outstanding commitment to music education. Now in its 25th year, the Best Communities for Music Education designation is awarded to districts that demonstrate outstanding achievement. Thank you, Mr. Nitch and all of our fine arts teachers for your commitment in making music part of the well-rounded education for our Red Oak ISD students. I also wanted to just mention a few of our highlights from our um, Ellis County Expo. Uh, we have uh, Olivia Puckett, who was in senior showmanship on the Gilt Show for Breeding Gilts. We have McKenna Johnson, who on Breeding Rabbits was Best of Show. We have Abby Ramirez, who on Breeding Rabbits was Best Opposite. And we have uh, Isabella Silva who was Market Lambs Division Reserve. That was an accomplishment as well. So those are just a few of the highlights. Lots of different places. Uh, we would be here all night if I went through all of them. But be sure and uh, check out our Facebook page that we also show all of the different students who uh, showed we had a very successful turnout there as well. And that's all I have for our superintendent's update. Okay, thank you. We have no one who signed up for open forum, so we'll move into, we have one non-action item uh, per state board of education texas education code 11.159 19 texas administrative code 61.1 and 61.3 completing required continuing education each year of service is a basic obligation and expectation of any sitting board member per policy bbd legal as board president i am required to announce the name of each member who has completed the required continuing education has exceeded the required continuing education and and or is deficient in meeting the required continuing education. I'm proud to say that uh, everyone on this board, John Anderson, Sean Kelly, Donna Knight, John Knight, Johnny Knight, Melanie Peterson, Michelle Porter, and Brian Seabreen have completed their board training, the required training, and each of those board members have exceeded the requirements uh, for education. We receive, we receive our credits through a, uh, a variety of ways, and one of them is through SLI Summer Leadership. Um, I will say this, not every board, you know, I've been doing this for it's about 22nd year. Uh, go same, you see the same people in the, in the conventions, and there are a lot of board members who don't go to the required training, but Red Oak has always attended the, the required training that they're supposed to. We do our time uh, during the convention. We don't always go to the same uh, same classes. Uh, some go sit in the same class all day long and just take whatever class is there. <laughs> that was me last year. I tried something new. Uh, but it is something we do take serious, and, and uh, we want everybody to, to know that. So, Next, we'll move into our action items. You have the consent agenda. Is there anything that you would like to remove to be acted upon individually. Hearing none, do we have a motion? I move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Peterson, second by Ms. Knight. All in favor say aye. Aye. 
Any opposed, same sign. Passes 6 0. Next is consideration and approval of new middle school bid packets 03. Construction guaranteed maximum price. Dr. Johnston. Thank you all. As we've said throughout this whole process of the second middle school, it's going to be bid out in multiple packages. And the third one that we're presenting tonight is the final one. The first one was for earthwork and the extension of the utilities through over the new construction area. The second was for steel, concrete, and electrical switch, switch gear equipment. And the final one is for the actual construction of the facility. And that this third bid is for $53,852,000. The total of all three bid packages, which is the guaranteed maximum price for the construction, is $76,014,674. So a little over $76 million. There are additional costs, the FF&E, the fixture furniture and equipment, and things like that. So it's going to be it's going to be higher than the $76 million, but it's going to be well under what the bond package amount was. So that's going to be good for when we have to go out before again to be able to show the community that we're under 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 price. Do you have any questions? When do you estimate we'll have a? This is the maximum price. When do you think we'll have a, a good solid? total cost I, I think i would say that's pretty much when we start looking at the furniture and the technology and purchasing that which probably would be within the next year okay. anybody else have any questions do a motion i'll make a motion we approve the new middle school uh, bid pack three as presented Second. We have a motion by Mr. Knight and a second by Mr. Sebring. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Thank you, sir. Pass the 6 0. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Consideration approval of technology device purchase. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I come tonight to ask to request for the purchase of 538 Chromebooks. Um, it will be a, an amount to not exceed that. It's going to be based on the amount that is remaining in our ESSER funds um, that will be used to purchase this. This will help continue our one-to-one -one initiative at the middle school, high school, and um, the third through fifth grade campuses um, for our one-to-one -one initiative for Chromebooks. Any questions? So this basically this is going to replace some of the ones that we have now that are basically either outdated. in the black or that need to just be replaced because of wear and tear. Yeah, that's what yeah. We have a motion. I move that we approve the purchase of Chromebooks from Delcon Group as presented. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Peterson, a second by Mr. Sebring. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Thank you. Thanks for coming up. That concludes our action items for tonight. Um, you see in the back of your book, the or back, in the back of your package, um, all the different uh, updates and notes from the campuses. It, time is... Got my computer locked in. 7.52. 7.52. 752. And the board will adjourn in the closed session of pursuant to multiple Texas government codes as listed on the agenda.